Hey everyone, Caroline Roberts here and welcome back to my YouTube channel. So in today's video, I'm super excited to share my wedding story. Grab your cup of tea, your bag of popcorn, and we're going to get right into the video. So let's get started. So some of you guys already know this, but for those of you guys who don't know, when I was single and when I was in my waiting season, God actually showed me who my husband was. So I knew that this person was supposed to be my husband. And when God brought us together, we started courting very soon. So we started courting in October, 2012 and we courted for three weeks. When I came together with my husband, I didn't share with him that, you know, God told me that he was supposed to be my husband. I didn't tell him anything like that because I didn't want to creep him out. And I also wanted to see if he was also in alignment or if he received the same message. So he is actually the one who revealed it first or he brought it up first. And then I was able to confirm that. So from the very beginning, we both were very sure of one another and we both were very sure that God wanted us to be together. And this is why all of the events that happened after this transpired very quickly. A week or two weeks after we had this conversation where we felt like we we're supposed to be together, we ended up courting in October 2012. So we courted for three weeks then we got engaged in november 2012 and we we were engaged for nine months while we were engaged we went through premarital counseling and while we were engaged i also wrote my first book before saying yes to the ring and this was a book that i just felt like i needed so i really wrote it for myself but i felt led to turn it into a book and basically what my book was all about is how do I know that I'm ready to be engaged and how do I know that I'm ready to take that next step of entering into marriage? And the answer that I came up with is commitment. Commitment. When you are ready to commit um, through sickness and in health for richer or for poorer, you know, ups and downs in and out of every season when you're truly ready to commit to a relationship and love someone unconditionally then that is when you are ready to get married and when i got to the end of this book i said i don't really know who this person is really that i'm marrying but god revealed to me that i'm supposed to be with this person and i trust god and i know that he has the best plan for my life and because of that i'm i'm willing to commit to the decision i'm willing to commit to this marriage because if the lord truly put us together then it, then he has a purpose for us and it's supposed to be successful i came to that conclusion and i said okay i'm ready to move forward and marry this person and we both felt like that was the time and that was the season that the Lord wanted us to get married in. So there are a few things that I want to address in terms of how quickly we progressed or how quickly we got married from the point of, you know, courting all the way to our marriage. So all of this happened in under a year, if you added up the time, it was in less than a year when God, you know, brought me and my husband together. And before then, he had revealed to both of us individually that we were supposed to be together. And in less than a year, we came together and we got married. But I want to say several things about that. First of all, I know people may be looking at it and they may say, God, like, why did this happen so quickly for her? You know, it didn't seem like she had to wait that long. So I want to address that because to a lot of people, it may look like we just arrived. Like God just brought us together and we are married like within a year. But there's a lot more layers to this story that people don't know unless they've 
experienced it or unless they hear the story. So I just want to unpack that a bit. First of all, we had actually dated before. Okay, so I met my husband in 2011 in college. And when we met, we were at two very different places in life and we weren't equally yoked. The people who met my husband after we got married, like the they wouldn't recognize him, the him that he was before. And then the people who knew him before we got married, it's funny because now I think a lot of those people don't recognize him or they're like, okay, you're very different. And when I came to college, I was actually very broken, very hurt, and I went through um, a traumatic experience. So I was actually engaged before. So the promise of marriage, um, the promise of you know having a loving husband, family, raising kids, that is something that I have had you know, ever since I was a little girl, like for a long time. I always wanted to have a family. I always wanted to be married. Some don't, and that's okay. But this is something, this is a desire that I had wanted for a while. And when I was engaged in my first engagement, we were engaged for a few years. We were together for a few years. But the thing about that situation was I made it an idol. So it was like I was waiting for this promise to come to pass. I was waiting. I thought this was the person I was supposed to marry, that we were going to have children together. But I had marriage as an idol. And God denied me from going forth with that relationship. God took that relationship out of my life. Actually, the day after I break up with this person, I go to college. So I go to college in the summer of 2011. And in 2011, I'm angry at God. I'm mad at God. And I'm like, God, you promised me this. I thought that this was the one. I thought that it was going to work out. I've been waiting, you know, to be married. Like, but it didn't work out. Like, why did it have to end this way? I was really mad and frustrated with God to the point where I was a Christian, but I backslid. So basically, you know, I went back to my old ways. So I went to college and I was partying, I was drinking, I was talking to multiple guys. I intentionally wanted to hurt them the way that I was hurt. So this is the state in the mindset that I was in. And I had no idea that the year that God broke off, and I'm just realizing it now, like I'm just realizing how profound this testimony is as I'm recording this video because I've never realized it until I'm speaking about it now in this moment. But I had no idea that the same year that I lost what I thought was the promise, the same year that I lost who I thought was supposed to be the one, was the same year that God brought the true promise into my life. But like I said, when me and my husband first met, we were unequally yoked. Because we were unequally yoked, we were playing house, meaning he would sleep over my apartment, I would sleep over his place. Um, so we were trying to pretend like we were married. So with the benefits, but without the commitment, right? So my husband in college, he was like the hot man on campus. He was like the popular guy. Everyone knew him. Him and his friends would host all these parties. So they had a drink business, a daiquiri business, where they would make daiquiris. And my poetry group went to an open mic night that was co-hosted. So his friends, their business, they were co-hosting the event with the people who were over the venue. So my husband was one of the managers of the business and that's what he was doing. And I was at the event supporting my poetry group because we were there to do spoken word and open mic. So basically how I met my husband is he was selling drinks and this is like the season where I'm backsliding and all that stuff. So I went up to him asking for a free drink and it's so funny because he just got done telling all his friends to stop giving out free drinks. But when I came and asked him, he gave me a free drink. We started talking and fast forward, it didn't really work out because 
even though I was trying to be bad, I was trying to like live the bad girl life. I was trying to go to the club. I was trying to backslide. I had the Holy Spirit living inside of me and I knew we were unequally yoked. So eventually we just broke up and I was like, I can't do this anymore. And for that time that we were separate, we were separated for nine months, okay? And God is so amazing. When I tell you what he did within that nine months, he ended up getting saved. He ended up getting baptized, filled with the Holy Spirit. He used to live with his friends and they would throw parties and all that stuff. He ended up moving out of the apartment or where he lived with his friends. And he ended up moving to a Christian home, like a Christian community-based home and building community and fellowship with believers and all that stuff. So all of this is going on with him. During that nine month period, I was going through healing. I was breaking off my soul tie. I was cutting away that re my past relationship with my ex. I was doing all of that. And then when I finally got to a place of complete surrender and contentment, and I said, God, if you never bring another relationship in my life, I am good with just you. Like this has been an idol in my life for so many years. And I, I made a vow to God and I said, I do not want to get married until after college. I said, I'm not even gonna even consider that. Like, I just wanna finish school. I wanna focus on you. Like, I don't even need to be in a relationship. And it was after that, that God revealed to me that my husband, you know, was supposed to be Cal. Like I said, people may look at me or look at my situation and be like, oh, it looked like they got married so quick. It looked like she just got her promise. She just got what she wanted. It just looked like she arrived. But people don't recognize the years that I felt I lost, the years that I felt I wasted in that last relationship, in that last engagement, where I really thought that this was supposed to be it and it wasn't the one, it wasn't the promise and the hurt tied to that, the pain tied to that, the healing that I had to go through tied to that, the soul ties that were tied to that, like... It looks like oh, God just gave it to her, but people don't see like the restoration. And it, like I had to make a decision because when we did come back together and when we had that conversation where he said, I feel like you're supposed to be my wife. And I said, you know, I agree. This is what the Lord has been showing me. But I told him, I said, I don't know if I want to move forward with this, especially not now, because I've made a vow that I can't be in a relationship until after, you know, I graduate college. I just want to focus on God right now. I'm not trying to be in a relationship. So even after, you know, we revealed this to one another, I said, this doesn't mean that we need to hop into a relationship right now. But... I, the Lord kept wrestling in my heart about this, about courting. And I'm like, no, God, I said I'm good. Like, I'm content. I don't want to be in a relationship right now. Like, I'm good. And I spoke to my best friend and I was really telling her, like, I don't want to be in a relationship. So why would God bring him into my life now? Like, why wouldn't God bring him into my life after college? I want to finish school. I want to focus on school. So why is everything happening so fast? Why is everything happening right now? And my best friend brought to me that scripture in the Bible where it says obedience is greater than sacrifice. And in that moment, I was trying to give God a sacrifice. I was trying to say, God, I sacrifice, you know, this desire. I sacrifice this thing that I know deep down inside, I, I do want to be married. I do want to have a family in a loving marriage. But I sacrifice this to you because I want you to know that I love you. I want you to know that nothing else matters, that I, I can lay this on the line. I can not, not ever have this and I'll be content in you. So I was giving God that sacrifice of my heart and saying that, you know, I'm not even going to consider a relationship until after college. But... God was leading me in another direction. It was the time and it was the season where he wanted us to get married because our marriage wasn't about us. It's about what God wants to do and his purpose for the marriage. 
And she said, Bestie, obedience is greater than sacrifice. And I just want to say that my best friend, she's also a very great integral part of this whole story. My best friend and I made a vow to one another that we are not going to have sex before marriage. And we both were able to keep our vow, praise the Lord. And she just recently was able to see her promise come to pass. She just recently got married. I was just doing so much in her life. I was her maid of honor and she was my maid of honor at my wedding. But it's like, me and my best friend have been through so much together. We've been through singleness and we practice on each other. So during my waiting season or that those nine months where um, I was single, I was focused on God, but at the same time, he was preparing me for marriage. So I would practice my cooking on her. She always says, I got all the burnt toast. I got all the, you know, the egg, the messed up eggs. She got all of my mistakes, all of my practicing. When I ended up getting engaged and courting, and all that stuff during college, I'm sure my best friend could have felt like, oh, I'm jealous, why is this happening for her? But she was so supportive. Like, she, I never felt like she was jealous. I never felt like she was like, why is this happening for her now? She probably had moments like, God, can this happen for me? Is this gonna happen for me? But she just supported me throughout every season of my journey and she never was jealous. I guess she just trusted that God's timing is different for everyone. And I wanna say the same thing for you because it may look like I got married quick, but I didn't have the wedding of my dreams when I first got married. It wasn't all lilies and roses. We got married because we felt it was the time that God wanted us to get married and we wanted to be obedient to that. Because we got married so soon and because we were struggling college students, and also to be honest, because some people in both of our families did not think it was the right decision for us to get married before I finished school. So they also wanted me to wait and finish school first. And I was like, I love you guys, I respect this, but we feel like now is the time. And I feel like a lot of people feel like they need to wait till they have everything perfect to get married. And going back to my book, this is another reason why I wrote this book because I wanted to really delve deeper into that question. Like, what do you really need in order to get married? Do you have to have a big savings account? Do you have to have a house? You know, do you have to have a college degree? Like, what do you need to get married? And you guys know that I give tips. I have videos here on this channel that give you tips on, you know, things that you can do during the waiting season, but everyone's waiting season is different. So you have to see what waiting season does God want you to have, whether that's nine months, whether that's nine years, everyone's different. And you, can, you can't compare your waiting season to somebody else's. I dropped out of school my last semester of college, okay? So you could see how that could be shocking to my parents and that could even be like hurtful because they're like, you're almost there. Why did you drop out? But I'm just like, I don't think it's time. Like, this is what I'm feeling led to do. And I know that it looks crazy, but in order to grow in hearing God, you need to stop listening to people and tune your ear to being obedient even when it doesn't sound, when it sounds crazy. There are so many times in the Bible where God told people to do things and it may have sounded crazy, it may not have made sense, but you have to be obedient to what God is telling you to do. And I think that it's because of obedience, that's why God is able to show out in my life. Not saying that I deserve anything, I am not deserving of anything that God has given me. I don't deserve it, but it's by his grace. But because I'm obedient, it allows him more space to move. When you're disobedient, then God can't move in your life because when you're disobedient, that's basically you saying, I know a better way. I wanna do it my way. My way is better. But when you're obedient, you allow God to work and you allow his way to 
unravel in your life. I believe that even though I was afraid, you know, when we got engaged and how fast everything was going, even though I was afraid, even though I was like, God, I would rather wait till after I finish school because I said, obedience is greater than sacrifice. You don't want my sacrifice. You want my obedience. And you're telling me now is the time that we need to get married. I'm going to do it. And I feel like it's because of that I was able to see the restoration of that promise fulfilled so soon. Because like I said, I felt like I lost the promise. I felt like I wasted so many years. I'm like, I spent all those years in that relationship thinking that this person was the one and this is how it's going to end. You know, I'm going to restore you. But are you willing to be obedient? And it was after I surrendered all to God and I said, God, I'm just content with you. He said, this is who your husband is. So there's a reward for obedience. There's a reward for seeking God first. And the Bible says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and all his righteousness and everything shall be added unto you. So we eloped, we got married over Skype. And for those of you guys who don't know, Skype is like a video conferencing software. So basically in layman terms, we got married over the computer or over the internet. So the, the our marriage mentors or our marriage counselors, they lived in Atlanta, Georgia, and they were on the other side of the screen. And he did like a whole ceremony it was the pastor, um, his wife, and then their son. And they were on the other side of the screen. And we were sitting together on the other side of the screen. I didn't have a dress on. I didn't do my makeup. I just literally had like, I think a t-shirt and jeans on. And he was dressed normally as well. And then when we pulled up the computer and they were on the other side of the screen, they were like fully dressed. Like they took it so serious. I just love it, thinking of it to this day. But they had like on a suit and a dress. Like it sounds crazy talking about it, but they literally showed up like to the computer, like fully dressed out for a wedding. We're sitting down on the computer and he made us say our vows. He's like, did y'all write any vows? And we're like, no, were we supposed to do that? So we didn't write any vows. So we just exchanged the vows that he said, and he made us do the exchanging of the rings. And he said, you may now kiss the bride. I think it's so cool because I've never heard of anyone getting married over the computer or over Skype. So I, I appreciate that it was unique and that it's different. But if I can be honest, obviously that's not like the wedding that I was dreaming of. That's not like the dream wedding that, you know, I grew up imagining for myself. But that's how it happened. And after the ceremony was done, they're like, congratulations. And we closed the computer and we hopped in our car and we moved into our first home. Our first home was a hot mess, guys. It was in the ghetto. They were selling drugs next door. We slept on a sofa bed the first day. Like, not even a sofa bed. It was an air mattress, like the blow-up bed like that you blow. It was an air mattress. We went through so much with that first home. Like, literally, the roof was falling. It was leaking. It was just crazy. Like, But it was so fun because it was like, you know for sure I did not marry my husband because of his money. I did not marry him because of his career, because his money, for his status. I, I did not even marry him for my feelings and emotions because I didn't really know my husband. We, we met in 2011 and in between that time of us meeting and getting married, we had nine months apart and separated, okay? So I didn't really know my husband especially because when I did spend most of my time like dating him and talking to him, he was in the world. So when we came back together, he was saved. So he was a completely different person who I had known when he, you know, before he was saved. And he was, he wasn't even like the same person. I can't even explain to you when we came back together, he didn't think the same. He didn't talk the same. He didn't look, he was so different. And it's just crazy how God did that. When we came back together, it was like, boom, 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 like courtship, engagement, marriage. 
but it happened so fast because we were so sure and we felt like it was the time. So after we got married over Skype, you know, we didn't have a honeymoon. We were so broke that we had to get a Groupon for two. We had a Groupon for two for dinner and that's all we could afford was dinner. So I'm not saying that with my story, we did everything right. It hurt a lot of members of our family that they weren't there to witness it and that we, we did it. That was really hard. That was really hard to work through. And I think I need to express how hurt a lot of my family was and a lot of his family was because the more that I make like I'm truthful about the story and what really happened I feel like it brings more glory to God because the purpose of this video is not to bring glory to myself the purpose of this video is not to show that we did everything perfect the purpose of this video is to show how through our brokenness through the broken relationships through the missed promises how God still worked, how God still restored, and how faithful he was. That is the purpose of this video. So I want to read this post that I made on social media because this post really sums up kind of the journey of God's timing and I got a lot of feedback on it. So I want to read it really quickly. And basically it says, man's timing versus God's timing. How people said I should do it. People said I should go to college, get your degree, start your business, get married, and then have kids. But how God decided to do it in my life. So I first went to college. I got married over Skype. I dropped out of college, started a business with no degree, no experience, just trusting in the Lord. Ended up having two kids, getting pregnant, and while my kids were babies, God sent me back to college, went back to college. And then while I was in college, taking classes, taking care of my babies, running my business, I had my our five-year vow renewal. So we, we had to plan our wedding. We had our five-year vow renewal. And this is when we actually had our actual wedding. And then I just recently graduated from college. I'm recording this video in 2019. So we had our five year vow renewal in 2018. And in 2019, I graduated from college. So I waited five years to have my dream, dream wedding. I waited nine years to graduate, graduate from college from 2011 to first stepping foot on, a, on my college campus to graduating in 2019, that is nine whole years of delay, nine whole years of trying again, nine whole years of, you know, this whole journey of schooling. Trust God and his plans for your life. Trust him with your life's goals, your dreams, and your milestones. His way is always best. I refuse to let people rush me into starting or finishing anything when they think that I should. Start when God tells you to start. Move when he tells you to move. Stop when he tells you to stop. And in the waiting, always believe that his plan for your life is the best plan. When you let him lead you, you won't ever be led astray. So I think that my testimony and my story is just evidence that I'm waiting on God's timing. And sometimes when we're disobedient, while you're waiting on God's timing, the most important thing is to be obedient to what he's leading you to do. Because disobedient is gonna delay the process and make the process longer than it needs to be. A lot of you guys may be saying, God, it seems like I've been waiting for forever. It's been years and years and years and I'm still single or I still don't see the promise. What is happening? Are you being obedient to what God is telling you to do? And if you are being obedient to what God is telling you to do, then that's great. Then that just means it's not the time. But he makes everything beautiful in its time. And everyone's timeline is different. You can't compare your timeline of your life to what God is doing in someone else's life. The Israelites, they were on an 11 day journey to the promised land. The journey to the promised land was only supposed to take 11 days. Guess how long it took them, guys? It took them 40 years, 40 years 
to get to the promised land when it was only supposed to take 11 days. And a lot of us are like those Israelites. God has a promise for you. He has a promise that he wants to take you to. It's supposed to be, you know, quicker than you think, but because we're stubborn, because we create idols in the wilderness, because we're disobedient, a journey that's supposed to only take 11 days ends up taking 40 days. And my process to my promise um, or my desire that I wanted it started to speed up after I got rid of the idols. It started to speed up after I decided to be obedient. So get rid of any idols in your life and you know, be obedient to what God is telling you if you feel like there's a delay in the timing. But even after you've been obedient, even after you've gotten rid of the idols, trust that God's timing is perfect. Just going back to my best friend, my best friend and I were in college together. We were waiting together. I ended up courting, engaged in Mary, and she was still in college. And when I had my first kid, she was graduating from nursing school. So we were in two different places in life. So I'm adjusting to motherhood and she is now walking into the career that God has for her. She could have looked at me and said, oh, I wish I was having kids right now. And I could have looked at her and I could have said, I wish I finished school. I wish I was graduating school right now. While she graduated, I wasn't finished. So it's like, we started together, but God took us on two different journeys. And then when my best friend ended up getting engaged, I was having my, I had my second kid. When she was planning her wedding, I was planning my wedding. So we got to plan our weddings together. So it's so crazy how God took us on different paths but we ended up kind of meeting together in the middle. We ended up meeting together on the same path. So we were planning our weddings together. So while she was planning her wedding, I was planning my vow renewal. And she ended up getting married and I got to be her maid of honor. And then I ended up getting my wedding a few months, like two months after that or a month after that. And she ended up being my maid of honor. They're looking to like grow their family and buy a house. And I just graduated. So it's like we all got there. Like both of us got to the promise or different parts of our journey, but it was just at different times. It's just the timing is different, but it's going to happen. If it's God's will for you to get married, if it's God's will for you to graduate, if it's God's will for something to happen in your life, I just want to encourage you to know it's going to happen. It's just a matter of time. So you got to trust that your story is uniquely crafted. Your timetable is uniquely crafted to whenever God plans it out. Some of us are comparing our chapter one to someone's chapter 20. You can't look at someone else and their success and where they are in life and say, God, how come they have this? How come they're here and I'm not here? And it's like, you're still on chapter one. Just wait and see. Give me 20 years. Give me 10 years. Give me some time to really develop and show you what I have in store for you. No eye has seen or no ear has, has heard what God has in store for his children. So just wait and see what God has in store. Don't compare your starting point to someone's midpoint or to someone's end point. In the Bible, the number three and the number seven and the number nine are all numbers, meaning completion. Number nine is actually the, the highest number of completion and finality. And when I look at our timeline, I think it's so crazy that it's, so, it's three, nine, and nine. So our courtship was three weeks long. So that's number three. Our engagement was nine months long. And the amount of time that we were apart before God brought us together was also nine months long. And we got married on August 1st. And August is the number eight. And number eight means new beginnings. And one is like the first number. So I love our anniversary and I love that, you know, it's 8-1 and it means new beginnings. And we always said that on the fifth year and five represents grace that we wanted to have our vow renewal. So a year before 
I was praying to God and I was like, God, are we really going to have this renewal? Are we really going to plan this wedding? Like, are you going to bring this, this promise to pass in my life? Like, is it going to happen? I was going to the Pinky Promise Conference and they were having a clothing swap. So basically what the clothing swap is, you bring clothes and then you can swap and trade for some other clothes. And during that fourth year, someone felt led to donate designer wedding dresses to the clothing swap. And I was like, God, if I win a wedding dress or if a wedding dress ends up fitting me, then I'll move in faith and I'll start planning the wedding. But because I had so much stuff going on, I was pregnant at the time, raising children, I was going back to school and it just seemed too hectic. And I was like, God, is this really going to happen? Is this really going to come to pass? So the Lord told me, he was like, empty out your closet, empty out all your old clothes and bring it to the clothing swap. And I probably had like two trash bags full of clothes and I donated it all to the clothing swap. And they gave me like over 50 tickets that I could use to redeem and get clothes. But when I went... You're like, there's one dress left. You know, does anyone want to try it and see if this dress fits them? And this was the dress. And I looked at it and I was like, I really hope that it fits me. And I was like, you know, I'm already married, but I'm thinking of having a five year anniversary of next year. Do I qualify? Like, can I try it on? And they're like, sure, you can, you know, you can try it on. So I went to the bag and I tried it on and I'm pregnant. But even with me pregnant, it felt like this would fit perfectly, like after I have the baby. So um, the dress, like it fit perfectly. It was just, it couldn't zip up all the way because I was pregnant. But I walked into the room and the girls were there and I was like crying and the girls were like, Oh, it was just so beautiful. So basically I said yes to the dress and I got this free designer wedding dress for my wedding and I left with the dress and I was just like, wow, like it's meant to be like, I'm meant to have my wedding. Like God is going to fulfill this desire of mine and he's going to give me my wedding. In faith, we started looking for venues and we found the perfect venue and the perfect place. And it was one of the most beautiful days of my life, guys. Like, I can't explain to you how perfect. Everyone was saying that the wedding was so perfect. Like the people who needed to be there were there. It was so beautiful. It was so beautiful. And we're still working on the wedding video. That's going to come out soon. But for the sake of this video, I'll insert a few clips as I am speaking. But it was, it was God's hand over it. It was supposed to be raining that day. The weather was perfect. Everything was beautiful. Over the five years, like I said, my family, they were like, some of them were hurt and stuff. And me and my mom really went through some struggle with our relationship, but God worked it out. And when I tell y'all he is faithful, he worked it out. So the wedding was very emotional for me, um, but you could see God's hand. You could see his hand all over it. Um, me and my mother had a, an opportunity to dance together. We did a mother-daughter dance. And I'm like tearing up thinking about it. But if you could just imagine everything she's been through. My mom is from Haiti. She was a single mother. She traveled from Haiti to America to give me and, you know, my other siblings a better life to create a better life for herself. So she wanted to be there when we got married. She wanted to see the wedding. She wanted to see me graduate. So she was really hurt by some of my decisions. So there's so much behind this moment. Like if you could just understand the weight of it, being able to dance with her at my wedding, it meant so much. And the fact that she put everything she felt aside, you know, any hurt, any betrayal that she felt, she put that aside and she was there. 
She was there to support me. She was there to zip up my dress. She was there to put on my shoes. Like this lady is my best friend. This lady is everything. It was just such a beautiful moment. We did the washing of the feet to show that we serve one another, we love one another. And it was so beautiful that my son and my daughter were there to be able to partake of our wedding. And I was like, God, I'm glad we actually waited because our kids are here to witness it. My son was um, the ring bearer. And at that time he couldn't walk. So, cause he was still so young. We, we, we did a wagon for him. And it was just, it's something that we're always gonna remember because we made his wagon from scratch. So we went to Home Depot and we got like wood. We bought sep the wheels separately. Um, I went to like Michael's and I bought like the ribbon. I made a skirt. We, we, um, we glued a skirt to the bottom. So we made his wagon from scratch and my sister, you know, pulled him down the aisle in his wagon and he was so cute. My daughter was the flower girl and we were like preparing her for that moment like months in advance. So we're like, baby, you're the flower girl. This is your responsibility. This is your job. You know, you gotta pick the flowers. She took her job so seriously, guys. <laughs> she ran out of flowers and then she went to the bushes and she was picking flowers so that she could throw on the floor. She was like the best flower girl ever. And when we were doing the washing of the feet, she was front and center. She wanted to see what it means to, you know, love your bride like Christ loved the church, what it means to serve your spouse. Like she was front and center. She sat on the floor, she was watching us wash one another's feet. So it was such a beautiful day. But one of the biggest parts of our wedding that was so, so special to me, and when I got this revelation, I understood. I realized why God didn't allow us to have the wedding the time that we actually got married, because it wouldn't mean as much. And let me explain why. People, when they think of marriage, they, they only think about the wedding. They don't think about the marriage. They don't think about the relationship. They don't think about the love. And I'm not just talking about everyone, just some people. They're so focused on the wedding. They're so focused on the flowers and the dress. And God didn't want that to be the focus of us. He wanted our focus to be true love, unconditional love, true commitment. And when we got married, like I said, I didn't know my husband. It was kind of like an arranged marriage, if I could be honest. It was like God arranged our marriage. God chose us for one another. And we said, okay, we accept this. We'll be with each other. We're attracted to each other. We'll, we'll trust you, God. We'll trust that you're doing something here. So I do, and I tell my husband all the time, like I feel like it was an arranged marriage. I feel like, God put us together and we were just obedient and we're like, okay. So I got to know my husband in marriage. I fell in love with my husband while we were married. And that is a really big thing because most people have a friendship before they get married. They're like friends for years or they fall in love before they get married. And then because they are in love, because they built a friendship, because they got to know each other, then they get married. That is not my experience. We got married so fast. And then we got married and we're like, who are you? <laughs> he said he loved me from the beginning, that he was in love with me. But if I can be honest, I think it's a different type of love. When I married him, it was unconditional love because I made the decision I'm going to love you. It's an act of love. I'm going to decide to submit to you. I'm going to decide to commit to you. I'm going to decide to be there for you. That is the type of love. But the more and more he loved me like Christ loved the church, the more and more he loved me through my ugly seasons, through my growing, through my continual healing, We've been through so much that I feel like everything we went through made me more and more attracted to my husband. 
because how much he showed that he loved me. And I feel like I needed that. And I see why God chose him for me. So about a month before our wedding renewal or a five-year vow renewal, I looked at my husband and I said, I love you. Like, I'm in love with you. And he was like, what? Like, what do you mean? <laughs> and I tried to explain to him, like, I loved you, but I love you, love you. Like, I am so in love with you. And it took me five years to get to that point. And when I got to that place, I was like, you know what, God? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for saving my wedding for the moment where I truly fell in love with my husband or for the moment where I truly understand, understood the weight behind my vows and what those words mean. Because when we sat there on the computer um, getting married over Skype and they asked us, do you have any vows? Have you prepared any vows? I'm like, I didn't even think of that. But I had five years to think about it. And I had five years to fall in love with my husband and learn him and you know, grow with him and develop and go through stuff together. And I was able to stand there on my wedding day and speak from my heart and truly look at this person and truly say, I know you. We have spent so much time together. We have grown together. Like I know who this person is that I'm marrying. And I love you and I want to continue to love you and I want to continue to grow with you and know you and develop. And it was such a beautiful moment and I will never forget it. I shared with you that in the first years of our marriage, I didn't love you. But you loved me from the beginning. And now I'm standing here renewing my vow to you, not just for obedience, not just for commitment, but because I love you like the same everlasting love that God shows us. And I vow to love you for the rest of my life. I vow to be your biggest cheerleader. I vow, I vow to submit to you, to support and cheer on your big and wild dreams as the visionary that you are. Even if no one stands beside you on this earth, I want you to know that I will always be by your side until the day that I die. We ended up going on a cruise, just me and him, and that was the first time ever that since we've been married, we never had like a vacation together that was long. We we did a like a two like a weekend, a two night Bahama cruise one time, but this was our first time just being me and him with no kids, just me and him on a vacation for like a long period of time. And I was like, wow, like this is our first time, you know, we have our honeymoon, this is our first time spending this much time like alone on vacation together in a new place so god was doing a lot of new things so that's why when i say eight the number eight august was really significant to us because it meant new beginnings and i also just want to share a lot of people ask me about my hair for the wedding and stuff because i was bald i was basically bald and a lot of people ask me, like, did you do that on purpose? Like, why were you bald? And it's a very funny story, guys. So the style that I wanted to have for my wedding day was finger waves. So I wanted blonde finger waves. So I was going for like a Marilyn Monroe, I guess, type of look. But I wanted blonde finger waves. And the night before my wedding, I tried to perm my hair by myself. And the funniest thing happened, all of my hair fell out of my head, guys. It like was so embarrassing. It's funny to laugh about it now, but I was like crying. I was like, I'm gonna be so ugly on my wedding day. I'm an ugly bride, I'm bald, I have no hair, oh my goodness. So 
I was freaking out. Even worse thing about it is I had dyed my hair blonde, but I didn't dye it correctly. So I had a like a, a black patch. I had a black patch on my head. So not only was I bald, but there was a black patch on my head. I just permed my hair. So it's not like I could dye my hair and, you know, um, fix the coloring. So I was like, what am I supposed to do? I reached out to my prayer team and those girls were praying for me and they were giving me tips to like, girl, get a wig. Someone was like, girl, there's some hairspray. So they were giving me tips. So on my wedding day, like the morning of, I'm running around like crazy. I'm trying on different wigs and stuff. I'm going nuts. I'm crying. I'm like, what am I going to do? And when I texted my husband about it, he was like, okay, stop. He was like, do not get a wig. I love you. You are beautiful just the way that you are. He's like, I don't care how you look. You're beautiful. Do not get a wig. I love you the way that you are. So that gave me confidence. That gave me reassurance. There was some hairspray dye that dyes it for like a day. So I got some blonde hairspray dye and I sprayed it to cover up my black patch on my head. And I went, I went bald and I went with the hairspray. And I don't think people noticed. Um, a lot of people at the wedding just thought I was making like a statement, like a hair statement. They thought I did it on purpose. And the reason why I bring up the situation of what happened with my hair, because I took it as symbolic and I took it as God allowed this to happen because I am walking into a new beginning. It's our five year anniversary. Eight represents new beginnings. God is doing a new thing in our life. So I'm getting rid of all the dead hair. I'm getting rid of all the old hair. And I was bald on my wedding day, but my husband is my covering. And this was allowing room for new glory to grow, new glory to come forth. So I kind of looked at it as there's a new thing that's going to be happening. There's going to be new growth. So after my wedding, I started to get my new growth. And this eventually trickled down into me starting up my natural hair journey again. And I think you need those memories because when anyone looks back at their wedding day, it's so awesome to have those funny memories of, you know, what happened and who was there. I love that we have those memories. The same pastor... Um, and he was actually our pastor at the time because we actually ended up moving to Atlanta. It was the same one who married us. So the same one who married us on Skype was the same one who was there to marry us for our actual wedding. So that was very special to have him do that for us. And it was a beautiful day. We danced the night away with our family, with our friends, with our loved ones. Like I said, my best friend. Um, was my matron because she was my matron of honor and my other best friend Tiani. Tiani has been riding with me through. So Tiani has been there since middle school. We have been best friends since middle school. So she saw the old me. She was there with my old past engagement, my old, my old relationship. She saw me go to college. She saw me back and forth. She has been there. I'm telling you, these are my girls. And we kept it really simple to like, people who really been riding for us. It was just a special day. And I really hope that this video encourage you to not compare your journey to anyone else. Um, this video encourage you to see that God is a restorer. So even if you've had broken relationships for decisions that you've made, whether those decisions were mistakes or whether you were just being obedient to what God told you to do, God can bring those relationships back together. He can restore those relationships. But don't compare your journey. Don't compare your timeline to anyone else. Trust that God has the best in store for you. And have some fun. Like, it's fun to follow God. The walk of faith is so fun because you're going to experience amazing things you're going to experience things you've never experienced before you're going to do things that people have never done so definitely have fun have faith be obedient and trust in the lord at all times so i hope this video was encouraging to you if it's your first time on my channel definitely subscribe and i'll see you in the next video all right bye